BCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Can't believe I'm putting my voice to this. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Thank you for your irrelevant opinion. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. The first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. I'm a broadcast journalist. I have a right to my opinion. Oh, son of a I am the best on this microphone, in that ring, even at commentary. There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Lucas the Intern. Uh, it's good to be here this Saturday. Ferran, need to get out of the house for once. For once? Well, you, you, know what, uh, you know what I mean. Do I, do I have to get the doctor's chair going, kind of like what uh, what Dean Ambrose did on... Oh, uh, but, and how does that make you feel? Uh, Thursdays, you know. Yeah, we'll 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 get into that. We've we've got a lot to get into this week. Holy smokes, including uh, one thing. Let me get it right off the bat before we get into all the news from this week. Something that I teased last week but didn't get to cuz things change second by second and around here. We were here. just very very uh yeah, we were just all over the place. Yeah. Triple H headlining a Hall of Fame but not the one that you think. <laughs> Uh, stroking his own. Paul Triple H Levesque will be inducted into the 2015 International Sports Hall of Fame on Saturday, March 7th at the Arnold Schwarzenegger Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio. So you didn't think he had enough to stroke his ego with. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but, you know, for people that say he does that. Uh, just to give you an idea of the company that he's keeping, uh, Triple H will join the class of 2015, including eight-time Miss Olympia bodybuilding champion Linda Murray. 11-time world kickboxing champion Dom Wilson, hmm. martial artist and world-renowned movie star Michael Jai White, or Jay White, I guess it is, J-A-I. Did, didn't Triple H win Mr. Olympia at one point in, like, when he was early on? You know, I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure he did. He was like a bodybuilder. I remember saying that. I used to play WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, and it gave you little factoids about um, wrestlers outside of the ring, and I think it said he was like a Mr. Olympia. I'm sure somebody will put that up at some point because people love throwing facts at me. Mm. Uh, 11-time world kickboxing champion Dom Wilson, martial artist and world-renowned movie... Uh, I mentioned that already. Uh, world powerlifting champion Ed Cohn, and five-time world boxing champion Evander Holyfield. Oh, wow, he's getting inducted with Holyfield. Now, to give you an idea, past wrestler inductees in the International Sports Hall of Fame include Bruno San Martino back in 2013 nice. and WWE's Mark Henry back in 2012. Hmm. Oh, wow. Well, you figure between his powerlifting, his <laughs> Olympic bids on a couple of occasions, I mean, he's a very oh, yeah, Mark noted... Henry, yeah. Yeah, uh, world's Mark, strongest man. Well, a lot of people have had the world's strongest man uh, moniker. True. So, there, there is that. All right, where to start for this week? Well, I guess we'll we'll start with, since we just talked about a Hall of Fame, let's go ahead and get to the other one for those who may have been under a rock this week. Oh, yeah. I, and I don't mean the, the one that you might smell uh, is cooking or something like that. That just totally bombed. Randy Savage finally entering the WWE Hall of Fame. Because he's the cream of the WWF, and that cream rises to the top. I sound like Macho Man on Helium. I apologize. <laughs> that could be a gimmick. Macho Man on Helium. No, Jay Lethal tried something like that already. You remember that? Oh, God. I, I don't want to. No? Uh, true, it involved... He did a pretty the, good Nature Boy impression, though, on TNA. He did. No, he did a great Savage impression, oh, too. Yeah. His... his, <laughs> his uh, he, Black machismo. I forgot to... I wanted to bring this up at some point. Didn't he used to date AJ Lee? Because wasn't she in TNA at some point? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't follow all their dating habits. I feel like... But wasn't AJ in TNA for a little bit? I... You know, I can't remember. Mm. There are a lot of things that I don't remember. <laughs> Anyway, WWE announcing this past Monday the headliner for the 2015 WWE Hall of Fame class, Macho Man Randy Savage, also announced the person who will be inducting Savage, longtime friend and bitter rival Hulk Hogan, which Brother. set a few people off. I, 
I'm I don't have a problem with it, but a lot of people do. The, the, I guess all the people who love their stars, eh, five stars, they're, they're, they're all uh, they want Ricky the Dragon Steamboat to be the one to induct him because of their five star match from WrestleMania three. Yeah, but just because of one match doesn't. I mean, exactly. They, have a, they had a good rivalry, but Hogan and Savage have more history if you really think about it. That because the the mega powers alone. Yeah. Yeah, like, and then the turn from that, and that would be like Savage inducting uh, Steamboat in when he went in, in two thousand nine. No, you have Ric Flair induct Ricky Steamboat because of their past history. Uh, yeah, you remember that. Uh, well, if nothing else, the <laughs> Flair Steamboat trilogy from yeah. eighty nine on pay per view. Yeah, I mean, just because of one five star match. Oh my gosh, y you know, y you have. Hulk Hogan, brother, in, induct Randy Savage into the Hall of Fame. You don't have Ricky Steamboat. Yeah, I'm 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 more than okay with 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 Hogan. Plus, you don't. It, there's a little bit of unpredictability there because there, at least at one time, was some legit bad beef between them or bad blood. Like they, I mean, they legitimately hated each other for a little while. So, I mean, Hogan is a consummate professional. I don't think he's going to use the opportunity to rip on the deceased. That would just be bad form in every regard. It's it's just it's not the time or the place for it. So he'll do the right thing. He'll keep it classy, San Francisco. You say San Diego, actually. I know it's it, but it the ah, Hall of okay. Fame. I, I see what you did. You see what I, I did there? Did. Yeah. It's, very funny. Very funny. It's 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 the best you got when you know, I'm running on 45 minutes sleep. What the, what the heck do you want from me? Wow, that's a new record. No, I've I've done a few shows on no sleep. <laughs> well, yeah, those but, are fun. Yeah, but like for doing. For for when you usually when you get sleep it's usually like at least two hours forty five minutes that's a new record for me <laughs> a new record low with <laughs> actually registering something <laughs> oh goodness all right um, well looking a little bit more locally because we're what eight days away from the Royal Rumble being yeah. here in Philadelphia and, uh, one uh, I'm waiting for next Saturday to finally do what I want to want to do for the Rumble the next next Saturday yeah like no just something I want to say on the air. Please, I, I I don't want an infringement suit from no, Michael no, no, Buffer if that's where you're going. Yes, I will. Yeah, no, don't. Yes, yes, I will. They'll, we'll get letters. How are we going to get letters? Who's going to... Who cares? Lawyers. Really? Really? We're not making money off of this. No, seriously, would we really get letters from that? I don't want to find out. <laughs> that is grade A bullcrap. Well, hi, welcome to the litigious society that is America. Sue so happy, everybody. Sue so happy. I got nothing to follow anyway, up with that. Anyway, um... But here's an interesting tidbit. A WWE <laughs> Hall of Famer entering a popular Philadelphia eating contest. Mm. Yeah, I told you about this earlier this week. <laughs> WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley has announced that he will participate in Sports Radio WIP's Wing Bowl 23. That should be interesting. On Friday, January 30th at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. For those unfamiliar with Wing Bowl, it is a chicken wing eating contest. It's kind of like the Nathan's hot dog eating competition held every 4th of July, only it's the Friday before the Super Bowl. It's a lot earlier in the morning. It starts at 6 a.m. And the arena is packed with 20,000 drunk, rowdy fans watching people eat wings. Nothing wrong with that. And there's quite a few scantily clad women as well. Definitely nothing wrong with that. You have school that day. I don't care. I'll take a sick day. I'm kidding. I... <sighs> Tickets are already sold out. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I wasn't even going to go to that anyway. But as far as the contest, Foley will be in. It's two 14-minute rounds of wing eating, followed by a two-minute sprint to the finish. <laughs> and not actually sprinting, but just two minutes of more wing eating. The, the record, to give you an idea of how, like, high the bar is set, the record was set by last year's winner, Molly Schuyler, who ate 363 wings. Was she the one that was on, like, she did a little thing on Tosh.0, too? I don't know. I, I've, I've seen maybe, like, three episodes of Tosh.0. Oh, yeah, that's right. You have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, Molly Schuyler eating 363 wins, or 363 wings, but winning in that regard in a 30-minute span. That's an average of a wing every five seconds. Ponder that. A wing every five seconds. Wow. 
That, yeah, I couldn't do it. The, with the right kind of sauce, I think I'd be able to not top the record but eat a wing every five seconds until my stomach was not ready for it. Well, one of the rules in is that you heave, you leave. So, yeah, yeah if, if you ended up losing your wings, you, uh, you would uh, be eliminated from the competition, a la being thrown over the top rope in the, uh, the Royal Rumble or something to that effect. So, yeah, Mick Foley, he's going uh, to be eating him some wings on the Friday before the big football game. That should be interesting for those who uh, will be taking care of it, I suppose. All righty. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll use this story as a lead-in. Uh, a U.K. bonus for waiting. After being teased for months, WWE Network is available in the United Kingdom and Ireland, and it even started earlier than advertised. Earlier this week, the WWE Network unofficially launched on Xbox One, Xbox 360, the iPhone, iPad, <coughs> PS3, and PS4 in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Now, the official launch is set for this coming Monday the 19th, and I have a hunch we'll hear a little bit more about that from a first-hand perspective on the other side of a timeout. We'll go ahead and take care of that now. So that way we can give him his full time because we don't want to, you know, yeah. gotta, gotta. I'll, I'll give him the introduction. I really want to work we'll, we'll, we'll take, yeah, we'll take care. Wait, you've got an introduction for him? I guess. He, he's going <sighs> to. Sweet mercy. <laughs> All right. Well, while we hash that out, we'll be back. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. 30-man Royal Rumble match with how many names announced so far? Don't count. I was just asking if, if you knew off the top of your head. Not really. I, I'm trying to find the page where we're talking about the Rumble. The way you've been today, I think it's on a rampage. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. Pretty much. Yeah. I know, the writing's small. Bringing neither the rhyme nor the reason, this is Pro Wrestling yes. Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Lucas, the intern, who is uh, beaming with pride, apparently, that uh, I guess somehow is able to work a candy reference into the show. Uh, that, that's, that's very funny. Yeah, yeah um, to, to explain I'm clever. that, because I, I think a lot of people were thinking... It's off the song time of the season. Eminem, uh, in his most recent album, not not the uh, Shady 15, but he, he did a song called Rhyme and Reason. That was The beat was based off of time of the season, so I, I pretty much well, marked out Because you had used some of the lyrics yeah. unintentionally last week, so that, that was that was what kind of the point of that was. Yeah, that, that and was. You, you, yeah, your initial realization of, oh, I see. Yeah, I it, heard the beat, and then I went, wait, wait, wait. Yes. That's exactly what it, yeah. No, it, do you not remember this conversation from No, last I do week? remember this okay. conversation. I was just trying to figure out what the beat was. Uh, you were just trying to put everything together. Put two and two together, and I've never really and somehow been you got, math. like, seven. Pensbury math. Oh, that's easy for uh, me to say. Oh, Temple <laughs> students, we're just smarter than what? I have already admitted that that was a dumb catchphrase 10, almost 11 years ago now. Yeah. All right, enough of our bickering and bantering. Why don't, we go to the, yeah, why don't we go to the phones? Yeah. Because on the line, taking some important time out of his day because uh, today is actually his birthday. None other than the, the great Harry Barnett. Not, um. Really? You're, 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 you're going you're gonna to go wrestling announcer with it? I guess. You're, you're, you're killing me, Smalls. Uh. The great Harry Barnett on the line. Harry, oh, welcome to the program. You have the Superman theme. Well, I mean, that introduction and the music in the background, who would have thought I'd have to change my ways to get such a, to get such a welcome? Uh, I mean, well, it, it's considered that? a birthday present. Wait, it's well, a one and done. What do you mean by change your ways there, Harry? Uh, well, what can I say? The, the, the great one that is with you today is not the same one that was with you months ago. The, whenever the last time I called in, Things have changed. Things happen, you know. Wait, wait, wait. Are, are you telling me that you've uh, you've turned? Um, well, I can turn this way. I can turn that way. You oh, know, he's taking the Cena joke. <laughs> oh goodness! What next? You're gonna how do a two-step? <laughs> You're the Charleston. How do you want to look at it? And all right, and and. and, and meaningless banter. Well, first of all, happy birthday. Second of all, how does it feel to finally have the WWE Network? Well... At least officially, I, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah officially. I, I was going to say, I had it on release date until about SummerSlam, and 
I'm going to say I loved it. I, I loved the WWE Network. I still do. And the only reason I ever really got rid of it because, was because I don't like sitting at a computer to sort of have to watch things at whatever time of the night. I don't even like sitting at a computer, for, you know, uh, just to do the website or to uh, the great entertainment network.com, by the way, uh, or to, you know, to talk to you guys. That I like walking around on the phone or whatever to actually be able to do it. Yeah, but, sitting at a computer yeah, is so 2002. Exactly. Oh, so there's nothing to be able to watch that. it on the PlayStation. To be able to watch it on the PlayStation and, you know, be able to, if I have to, fall asleep um, while it's going on, then... You know, it's a lot more comfortable, a lot more convenient, and what you really want out of this. Oh, very good. That's good to hear. So, was I, well, I guess it's hard to say in your case because you um, had kind of a sneak preview months earlier. But I was going to say, is it worth the wait? But oh yeah, yeah. Well, to, to, if you think about it, I without the network for about four months. So to have gone those four months and then finally have it back under the conditions that I do, it was definitely worth it. Uh, had I not had it from the start until SummerSlam, it would have definitely been worth the wait. Oh, yeah. You, well, you'd have been chomping at the bit and probably spending weeks on end just trying to catch up on all kinds of things. I mean, there's oh, yeah, so much exactly. to it, and they're constantly adding more. I mean, uh, uh, the Nitro episodes, I think they have Tuesday Night Titans on there. I mean, there's just so much. Uh, exactly, and I mean, the, the good thing is, you know, the, the fact that I can go and watch it and, you know, I've got it and Brady Hicks doesn't, so that, that really brings a balance to life. Um, but no, it, it's, definitely, it, it's definitely something that if there's anyone out there that's doing the whole, oh, I'm not buying the WWE Network, oh, I'll, I'll find it online. Don't be so tight, reach into your pocket, take out nine ninety nine a month, because it is only nine ninety nine wherever you go. Even here, they're charging those three extra dollars. Because I know the conversion rate. Those three extra. Yeah, dollars we went over it last dollars. week here on the show. Uh, be thankful you're not in Ireland. You'd be paying a few pence uh, more. This is true. But um, no, it'll definitely be a, a good tool, obviously, to watch the Royal Rumble, and you know, I may even keep it for the uh, plane ride over on the trip to WrestleMania. Well, that'll be well. Th that'll be interesting. I, I don't know how it necessarily works as far as transferring from the UK to the US. I know that when I was in Canada uh, a few months ago, I guess because they have that deal with uh, with Rogers Communications. Even though I paid for the WWE Network in the United States, it wouldn't run up in Canada. So I don't know if you'd have a similar issue going from the UK over to here or not. Well, I was paying for the. Uh, I was obviously paying for the American one for all that time, and. It was working fine, so, you know, I'll hold out hope. All right, guys, please hold. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, all right, so your take on uh, Savage, finally in the Hall of Fame. Well, I don't remember I either said this or wrote this somewhere, but, you know, uh, guys like Savage, the Hall of Fame or guys like Savage or anyone like that are all, it's always a respect thing for me. Uh, before my time, but... It's a great thing to see someone who really deserves it, who has been, you know, held out of there for whatever reason, be it Lanny or be it WWE. Uh, it is good for it to finally happen. And uh, even though, again, it was before my time, it feels so good to be able to say that uh, as soon as I'm done talking to you guys, uh, I'd say about 35 minutes from now, I'll be going to Ticketmaster as soon as the tickets opened, because I didn't go to the pre-sale, and I'll be buying my ticket to be there, see it live. Oh, how about that? that that'll be fantastic. I, I think that trumps us going to the Rumble next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I've got the ultimate experience, the ultimate wrestling fan experience, WrestleMania weekend. True. I've had samples of it. The the closest I think I've gotten, apart from going to WrestleMania 29 a couple of years ago, was uh, the access fan festival along with it being able to have a media credential for that which is is a different kind of take on it just because well yeah you know, there's part of the media so the the i had to kind of put my fan hat aside and oh okay let me go over here and talk to this person or oh okay we're gonna go over and interview damien sandow now 
Oh, that's awesome. Uh, He's signing autographs with a quill pen. <laughs> I wish I'd have been there to I'm see sure that. You broke out the, I'm sure you broke out the old plug a uh, fair record number of times that day. Um, no, mainly because uh, a lot of those interviews, thanks to the, the media personnel with WWE who are awesome, but it's, it's kind of a quick in, get a question or two, maybe two, three minutes tops, get out. So there's no time for any kind of chicanery, tomfoolery, or anything of that sort. It's... Uh, <laughs> You've got to be really quick, although William Regal apparently didn't get that memo. Oh, that I, I heard about that. You told me that was pretty cool. Yeah, he, I, I asked, like, a simple question, and uh, that, I have, I'm sure the interview archives are up somewhere on the BCB uh, fi YouTube page, at one of those. Um, maybe, maybe I can find it and put it up or something like that, but I just asked a simple question of William Regal. He goes on for about three minutes. I get the wrap-up sign as I'm asking one more question, and he goes on for another, like, three or four minutes. Yeah. That was like Dean Ambrose. He wouldn't give you. He'd give you like a very good, very good answer. Oh yeah, Dean was great. Uh, that, that was from back in October. For those who missed it, and check that on on on. I think on YouTube, and I think that's recent enough that it's also on the WBCB Archive. page itself. WBCB1490.com. We have a very good YouTube uh, YouTube archive, especially the person who manages it. Suck up. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a paid job. Flattery will get you... I don't know where it'll get you. A paid job, hopefully? <laughs> <laughs> That's not up to me. We'll have a chat with Matt Miro later. Nah, I don't want to bug him. Well, yeah, he's back from his honeymoon. I might can do it on Thursday, but you won't be there to, to protect me. If <laughs> to I, protect or lobby or anything of that nature. If I get into trouble. <laughs> if, more like when. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting you to, to actually agree on that. I figured we were going to oh, give please. resistance Who's across the board. Who's, I'm, I'm being very truthful. I'm very truthful when it comes to certain things, okay? Well, to most, actually, I, I'm going to be truthful with everything from now. Uh, that is not fair. <sighs> no, it's not fair, is it, Lucas? Uh, I know. Every Barnett, once in a while, I'll bring those out. Even though face turn, I'm still, I'm still a little bit uh, un, uh, unsure to trust you with certain things. I feel like an idiot. I apologize. You stop <laughs> that right now, Farhan. <laughs> See what happens when you, you put me behind the controls. You don't need to feel that way, Lucas. It's okay. You're not an idiot. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Do you want one more? Fine, You're whatever. You're going to get me in trouble, and I didn't even do anything. That doesn't even <laughs> have to do anything with the conversation that we're having. Well, no, you were just saying about getting in trouble with uh, Miro, and uh, it, it, well, that was like, like pay attention, that clean, was, out, clean out your ears. That was two sounders ago. Okay, you that had was your two chance. Two sounders ago. You had your chance. Oh goodness! Should have left you in Memphis. <laughs> oh, you mean my parents should have? Is that what you're saying? Home Alone, like five, probably wouldn't have gotten his Memphis Mayhem. Yeah, probably wouldn't have gotten his. Probably wouldn't have gotten like a zero star rating on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. And five stars from the internet wrestling community. Oh, stop it. No, seriously, stop it. Okay, fine. All right, so you're, yeah, that's right, you're going to be coming to the States here. So we'll have to see, I, I, we'll have to see how your schedule lines up. Maybe we might actually have, a, it's a remote possibility, the great Harry Barnett live in studio. That would be a pretty, that would be like our, Watch that be like the highest rated episode. <laughs> yeah, more 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 replays than the AJ Lee video and and the Dean Ambrose uh, uh, video combined or interview. I oh, should say. interview. I was gonna say, what what video is this? Where can I find this on the internet? Uh, Lucas, I was gonna say, don't joke because that really is a kind of a true statement. Um, but there are some people out there that would just keep pressing that play button over and over and over. And as you bring up AJ Lee. Um, you you right, were right to um, to query whether she did date Jay Lethal because I think Lethal actually trained her while they were together. Hmm. Very nice, very nice. See, I have that some fact. knowledge as well. There you go. And that's fact. I I'm, I was running through my Rolodex of responses and none of them are uh, clean. So oh, moving on. Yeah. Oh, you guys cracked me up. Uh, yeah. That's what we try to do. We, t yeah. we talk we talk wrestling news. We have a little bit of fun. Uh, it's, we try to make people laugh. All it's, we need is Frank Caliendo to call in every now and then. We'd almost be like Mike and Mike. You know. I said almost. 
Can someone explain my reference for me? It's a, yeah, he, he, he's unaware of, uh, of ESPN radio. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, they, they are a Mike and Mike in the morning. They're a uh, show on ESPN. They're also a radio personality. They have this guy, Frank Caliendo, who's a very, very... I don't know if you ever heard of Frank TV on TBS. He does a lot of very funny impressions, and he usually does impressions of, like, John Madden and a bunch of sports announcers over in the States. So, I'm not... Well, while we're on the, while we're on the topic, one last thing, while we're on the topics of uh, impressions, I really, it would never happen, but I really wish that they would let Jay Lethal uh, accept the Hall of Fame induction for Randy Savage, but obviously it's not going to happen. Wouldn't that be a little bit disrespectful, too? No, well, it depended. I mean, if if he got the blessing of the Poffo family and yeah. said, you know, we understand that you're paying tribute, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, yeah. that sort of thing. I'm not saying that what he's doing is, but just like a time and a place, you know. Yeah, it's one thing to do a comedy bit on TNA. It's another thing for a Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I, it would be a very polarizing decision. Yeah, dare I say, almost as polarizing as Let's Go Cena. Cena sucks. That would be pretty cool though if they actually want to do it though. Uh, it's the sort of thing that you can think, yeah, it, it, it would be cool if that happened, but it, it won't. Most yeah, it's it's the, it's at the same place as the, as Lucas's AJ Lee video, www.notgonnaeverhappen.com. That and Cena's heel turn. I yeah, mean, I don't know. Not after WrestleMania, how about a little heel turn? You know, because yeah, yeah, we're on radio. We can't we can't really show a visual. You're I'm a nerd. <laughs> Yes, I am. At a very... Uh, oh, good times. All right, Harry, th- we, we've got to get... Uh, yeah, we're, we're up against it, unfortunately, but uh, I mean, that's still a lot we got to get into. But thank you so much for chiming in all the way over from England. We look forward to uh, seeing you in a couple of months when you make your way over here for the WrestleMania festivities and all that fun stuff and appreciate your listenership as always. It's been fun as always, guys. Thank you. No problem. No problem. It's a good thing I didn't loop the Superman uh, th- thing because that would have been going for quite a few minutes. Be like New Jack when he came out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With natural book. It's another reference we've gotten for that. Go figure. It's, All right, we we've ha- got. Yeah, we've got a lot of New Jack ways to have New Jack on. Make a I suppose reference. so. All right, let's. Um, you know, we'll we'll get. Ed from Northeast Philly up, and then we'll take care of our second time out, and we've got a litany more things to talk about. But let, let's let's uh, let's get Ed up first. Ed, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Good afternoon. Uh, Jim Ross will be in town next weekend. Oh yeah, no, we uh, well, we had Jim Ross on the program a couple of weeks ago, and actually, I guess I can let the cat out of the bag now. But uh, this coming week, I will be uh, pre-recording a follow-up interview that will air next week on this program. So Jim Ross rejoining the program next Saturday here on, on Pro Wrestling Weekly. Yeah, it's, in, it's going to be at Underground Arts, 1200... Uh, 1200 Callow Hill. Hill. Yes, yeah. they, uh, they, there was a change of venue. Uh, uh, yeah. No reason that I really heard of, uh, of as far as why, but uh, is not any longer at the previously advertised place it is now at the underground arts uh, which is at 1200 yeah, Callow Hill Street Star- 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 Philadelphia this is the Philadelphia one this is this is oh. yeah this is the Sunday I'll go over on the other side I've got the chronology of all or at least all that I know of of the varying events that are going on between Friday and Royal Rumble Sunday there's quite a few of them to say the least I'll get those going on the other side yeah, he's at Star Lane Ballroom on the twenty third. This coming Friday. Yeah. Yep, that's. Uh, Friday. that's I know. There, there's God. There's so much going on. I think he's giving them barbecue sauce. Um. I'm not if sure. You, well, uh, I, I can clarify that, actually, because we, uh, we did discuss that. If you purchase a VIP meet-and-greet ticket, which I believe for both venues is $65, it comes with a ticket to the show, a meet and greet with Jim Ross, as well as a photo opportunity, and it comes with a complimentary bottle of his barbecue sauce. Hooray! But at the event, I believe bottles of his barbecue sauce and other products will be available for sale as well. So if you want, you know, if you want to get one but don't want to necessarily throw down the scratch for the VIP meet and greet, you can pay for a general admission ticket, and I believe still purchase. Uh, any of his bar- barbecue sauce or my favorite, the main event mustard, which we have a bottle of it here in the studio, in <laughs> fact. Well, in the station. I shouldn't say in the studio. It's in the lobby at the moment, but mm. you get the idea. I, I use words good. 
And then there's so many indie shows. <laughs> Take you pick. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll go over those. Uh, we'll go over all those on the other side, just because there's there's so much. It's uh it's it's a lot to get into. Yeah, that's about it. All righty. Thanks so much and for the O H two. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk R O H. We'll talk <laughs> Chikara. There, we'll we'll get into all of it on the other side. We'll take care of a timeout. We've got that. Uh, we've got. Uh, Monster Factory. Uh, uh, I was gonna say, as far as news, we've got a. Uh, a WWE pay-per-view that's looking for a home. Hmm. Maybe you two, you two can adopt it. I don't know. For just fifty cents a day. Just nine ninety-nine a day, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that would make more sense. Uh, also, uh, a popular wrestling TV program making its return, as well as a WWE stock update. Birthdays still, the chronology, a lot to do. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, January 17. On this date in 1999, WCW held its sold-out pay-per-view. In the main event, Goldberg defeated Scott Hall in a ladder stun gun match. On this date in 2000, WWF Monday Night Raw aired live from New Haven, Connecticut. In the main event, the New Age Outlaws defeated The Rock and The Big Show in a tag team match. On this date in 2005, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. In the main event, Kane fought Gene Snitsky to a no contest in a no holds barred match. On this date in 2010, TNA held its Genesis pay-per-view. In the main event, AJ Styles pinned Kurt Angle to retain the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. This has been Today in Wrestling History, January 17. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry here with you alongside Lucas the Intern. What's up, guys? Gearing up for what's going to be an insane weekend coming up next weekend. In fact, there's so much. Uh, let, me, let me just go ahead and tell you what's going on. First of all, Friday night. Yeah, you're cracking up, I know. <laughs> Friday night, January 23rd, as was mentioned a little bit ago, ringside, an evening with Jim Ross at the Starland Ballroom in Sayreville, New Jersey. That's at 7 p.m. Tickets range from $20 to $65 and are available at www.axs.com. Or if you're not exactly a uh, fan of the slobber knocker, you could... Make your way to, as you just heard there, WWE Live at the Sun National Bank Center in Trenton, New Jersey, starting at 7.30. Advertised to appear, you've got Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Chris Jericho. That's right, Jericho's back for house shows. Roman Reigns, Rusev, Kane, Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and John Cena. Tickets available for purchase at ComcastTix.com. And I might be able to hook you up with them. We'll get into that in a little bit. Saturday the 24th. Well, of course, from noon to one, you'll be tuned in here to WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. At least I hope so. Then there's Monster Factory Pro Wrestling at 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey, with a 2 o'clock bell time. Advertised on the card, two title matches, as well as a number one contender tournament. More info available at monsterfactory.org. Of uh, note, current Monster Factory heavyweight champion Luis the Punisher Martinez will not be in attendance as he has a scheduled tryout that weekend in Florida with NXT. How about that? Congratulations, Luis. We'll all be rooting for you. And then later that night, oh, goodness. So actually, no, before I get into later that night, uh, it was also brought to my attention that Mick Foley, before he stuffs himself with uh, chicken wings some six days later, Mick Foley will be making an appearance at the King of Prussia Mall. I want to say right around the time of my show, but fortunately you can listen to the show on the TuneIn app, so that way uh, you can listen while waiting in line. That might be the way to go. So for Saturday night, Ring of Honor will have a TV taping at the 2300 Arena, formerly known as the ECW Arena in South Philadelphia. That's a 7 o'clock bell time. A couple of six-person tag team matches highlight the card as the Bullet Club's AJ Styles and the Young Bucks take on ACH, Matt Seidel, and Cedric Alexander. Also in a six-person intergender tag team match, 
This will pique your interest, Lucas. The Briscoes and ODB face Matt Taven, Michael Bennett, and Maria Kanellis. Here she comes again. And you too. Tickets and more info at ROHWrestling.com. Get away with saying that. WWE Live, if that if you can't get down to South Philly. If you want to go north, WWE Live at the IZOD Center in East Rutherford, New Jersey. That's a 7.30 p.m. bell time. One of the last opportunities to check out any event in that venue. More about that coming up in a little bit. And then finally, Royal Rumble Sunday, Chris Jericho. He'll be at Dave & Buster's on Columbus Boulevard in South Philadelphia for autographs and photos from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And following that, Jericho will be a moderator between a live debate at the same venue between former WCW Executive VP Eric Bischoff and former Vince McMahon right-hand man Bruce Pritchard, better known as Brother Love. Tickets for these events are available at rfvideo.com. Also, Chikara Pro Wrestling, a new start. That'll be at the 2300 Arena starting at 2 p.m. on Sunday. For tickets and more info, visit chikarapro.com. And Ringside, an afternoon with Jim Ross, will be at the Underground Arts, 1200 Callow Hill Street in Philadelphia. Note this is a change of venue from what was previously advertised. Tickets range from $20 to $65 and are available at www.axs.com. And you'll be likely to see us there as well. Uh, you know, for whatever benefit that is. Yeah. Okay, now I did mention the IZOD Center and one of the last events for uh, those who are over here in PA, like myself, and didn't really catch wind of this. Uh, WWE's looking for a new SummerSlam home. That's right. The New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority voted on Thursday to shut down the 34-year-old state-owned IZOD Center in East Rutherford, New Jersey, citing $8.5 million in losses and mounting state subsidies. The IZOD Center was scheduled to host SummerSlam later this year. WWE is working on finding a replacement location. Now, the IZOD Center previously hosted the New Jersey Devils hockey team, which moved to the Prudential Center in Newark, and the former New Jersey Nets basketball team, renamed the Brooklyn Nets, who play in the Barclays Center, obviously enough in Brooklyn. There's a pretty good history with that building, that arena. Uh, notable events in that center. You go back all the way to August of 89, SummerSlam from the then Meadowlands Arena. Feel the heat. Of course, that was your main event of a tag match between, what was it, Hogan and Beefer against uh, Savage and Zeus? Maybe. Was that uh, to follow up with uh, No Holds Barred? No, that was before the match, oh. the movie. That was the summer prior. Uh, SummerSlam 97 in the then Continental Airlines Arena. <laughs> of course, Bret Hart and Undertaker with Shawn Michaels as the guest referee. Mm -hmm. That was your main event for that. Uh, the King of the Ring 2001 was in that building. No Mercy 2004. SummerSlam 07. No Way Out 2012. That's when it became the IZOD Center. WrestleMania access prior to Mania 29 in uh, April of 2013 as well as Raw the night after WrestleMania in April, on April 8th of 2013. You remember the Fandangoing craze? Yes. That's where it all started. And more recently, May 4th of last year, Star Wars Day, <laughs> Extreme Rules 2014, all held in the IZOD Center. The last pay-per-view that Daniel Bryan actually was, was wrestling in before he broke his neck. Ah, oh, very good. And he makes his return to the Royal Rumble. Very nice promo. I tried, and I worked on the impression. Okay, just keep away from the movie trailer in a world voice that you were going for Th that, there. That's what I was... Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, you, you got a ways to go with that. All right, we've... Uh, let's go ahead and get back to the phones here. We've got Ron from Morrisville has been hanging on. Ron, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Yeah, how you guys doing? Not too bad. Uh, I'm telling you, WWE <laughs> product is making me more and more... Wanna, Boycott it every week because their products make me sick with this uh, authority. I'm tired of it already. Enough, as as, as Owen Hart would say, enough is enough. A time for a change. Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, one week, one, one week they tell you uh, uh, when John Cena comes out and installs them back, and then after the show went off the air, I saw my computer that. Uh, um, out of nowhere came Randy Orton to help John Cena out and they didn't even announce it on that on that Friday night Smackdown that week uh, that he had come out it's like well, were my, they afraid to tell people 
Well, my guess is that was something for just the crowd, that that wasn't necessarily meant for the WWE universe necessarily. And I, I could see why they want to do that. I, I have a hunch, though, I mean, they, he could show up this Monday on Raw and that would pretty much destroy my hunch, but I have a hunch that maybe or they're saving Orton to be a surprise entrant for the Rumble. Well, that's what I was told. He was going to be in the Royal Rumble, according to what I've been reading on uh, the Bleacher Report and all these other things. They said that Randy Orton's going to make a surprise visit, and he's going to win it. The thing is, uh, with... Uh, well, it's not a surprise match, anymore. Well, and then we've got the, the triple threat match. Uh, you know, I'm seeing more and more that Paul Heyman's going to do a screw job on Brock Lesnar, and, and that, uh, that uh, Seth Rollins is going to win the thing, I, and he's going to go with Seth Rollins. And John Cena and both John Cena are going to be laid out. Uh, see, <laughs> you know, I mean, see, I think and the curb shots uh, to occur, what they call they call them, saying the stomps uh, this past Monday. I mean, it proved my case. So. I I don't know. I, I, is it possible? Yes, but I don't think. Paul Heyman would do a sh- would pull. It, what, what would he have to get? That, that would be like when Mr. No, Fuji. No, with, with, with Paul Heyman. You never, you know, I haven't seen Paul Heyman since he was Paul E. Davis in days, and nothing surprises me that gentleman. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but at the same what, time, what would he have? Like, who would what would he have, he have to gain? Left? Yeah, who would he have left if he lost Brock Lesnar? If he's, well, that's he's not a very good anyway, move. because I'm hearing that in WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar won't even have the belt by then. He won't even be in WWE. He'll probably be in, in MMA by then. Well, even still, it makes no sense as a manager, the few that there are left in professional wrestling, to turn on a rest, your own wrestler who is the champion. I mean, Mr. Fuji well, did that back in happen. 88 with... Happen. We never know anything can happen in, this, in, in WWE, even TNA. You never know what's going to happen in TNA. And I caught something on TNA that surprised me. Is that Bobby Lashley and uh, Rick Rude, uh, uh, Robert, I mean, Robert Rude, uh, when they wrestled, uh, uh, I, 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 I wish I could find out where I can get Discover America. I'd like to, on you know, basic cable and with Xfinity, I'd like to ha- see it. But I, I saw that, that uh, they both were cheered, and what happened uh, is, it was weird. To have two guys just dressed as uh, uh, Mitch McMahon come out and turn out to be Samoa Joe and Loki, and then here Eric Young is now a heel too. What is going on? I I I have no idea. I think a lot of this might be uh, might be coming from the the spoilers. Thanks so much for the call. If he, if he says that Rick Rude's wrestling in TNA, then you know that anything can happen. <laughs> I know he meant to say Bobby Roode, but he, yeah, the, the, I guess a Freudian slip there, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Rick Roode is a great wrestler. Who knows? Maybe maybe he's another one of the folks to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, I don't know. D- WWE doesn't like to go too many posthumous entries in the same year. So that's, uh, I don't know. That that I, I think it may just be one and done. I don't know. Lucas, your thoughts? I'm just still trying to figure out. They're saying that there's going to be more inductees or no, more inductees announced on Raw on Monday. I'm just trying to figure out who, who, because you got to think who else is left to induct back from like. They're mainly going for like Hulkamania Attitude Era. There's people that still need to be inducted, but like they got to sort of space it out from time to time. I want to see the Outlaws get inducted. New Age Outlaws. I could see them being inducted down the road. Yeah, that that's certainly a possibility. Well, yeah, I'd also like to see... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not... A lot of people wouldn't say he's a no- notable name, but I feel like maybe Ken Kong Bundy. I mean, he didn't really... You know, he... I mean, a WrestleMania two headliner faced off against Hogan. He, he has had some notable points in his career. I feel like maybe he should get inducted if they're trying to find people to induct... Here's a here's kind of a, 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 a what made me think of this. I'm actually looking up. Uh, it's a very small list, but um, how about Sid? Oh yeah, yeah. We we haven't inducted Sid yet. Now, the reason I say that I'm looking at WWE champions who are not Hall of Famers Taker and are not well and are not active or at least semi-active in Taker's case. We don't even know if he's coming back for us. We, we don't. So that is, that's why I'm kind of throwing that out there. Like Kevin Nash, Sid, those are those are probably two of the glaring uh, inactives. 
I mean, I'm, I'm sure some old, old school folks are going to call up and say, eh, how about Ivan Koloff? Because he, he was champion for, uh, I think, like a couple weeks, like three weeks. He beat Bruno San Martino, and then he was a transitional champion who ended up losing it to Pedro Morales, who held onto it for like two and a half years or something like that. What about, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of people that we can induct. Maybe well, I mean, there's the, like, time to go people, over this. I mean, it's not... People from the Attitude Era. Oh. I don't know. I don't think that the big Valboski is going to be... Uh, that wasn't exactly who... Uh, I know. It wasn't who you were that, going that could for. Be a, but. That could be a notable one. I mean, when Goldust is finally finished... Goldust, I could see getting in. I mean... Definitely, yeah. Well... What about Michael P.S. Hayes? He hasn't been inducted yet. I thought the Freebirds were put in. Yeah, but not Michael P.S. Hayes. Mm. Well, if... No, if, no. I, the Von Erichs were put in. Michael P.S. Hayes and was inducted the, the Von Erichs in 2009. I'm not sure if the Freebirds were put in. I mean, if Ric Flair can be a... Well, I mean, it's probably only Ric Flair could be the only one to be a two-time Hall of Famer. Well, that's another possibility. They were thinking, what about the NWO stable? We were talking a little bit about that last yeah, week. Yeah, that is true. Um, no. I'm trying to... Oh, th- you're right. The Freebirds aren't in. Okay, that... That that could be your tag team right there. Yeah. That's right. Michael Hayes inducted the Von Erichs in 2009. <laughs> yep. Good work by you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I mean, Sable. We were, we were talking yeah, about we that. Yeah, we were. T- I know. We'll, we'll, we'll be kicking this around for the next few weeks. All right. We've got, uh, we've got a couple minutes left here. Uh, how about some birthdays? Mm, let's Since hear I it. missed out on it last week. Because, again, things got shifted around. So... Happy birthday, well, not only to the great Harry Barnett, as we, uh, we spoke to earlier, but uh, from 1977, Kevin Fertig was born. The former WWE superstar, previously known as Mordecai, and Kevin Thorne, and known in OSW review lore as Kevin Vampire Dude, <laughs> turns 38 today. Happy birthday to Kevin Thorne. Wasn't Mordecai like the anti-Undertaker character that they had? That was what they were going for, yeah. yeah. Uh, I forget which OSW review talked about that. It was probably December it was, to December. Yeah, it was December to December. There we go. Check that out. My apologies in advance for the language. <laughs> <laughs> they're, two, they're three Irish guys. What do you expect? That might get let now. Uh, 1979, Chase Stevens was born. The former three-time NWA TNA tag team champion, one half of the tag team, the Naturals, turns 36 today. No? Okay. I- I'm trying to think of who... Because um, I, I, it so, it seems I think a they were managed familiar. by Shane Douglas for a little bit. It seems a bit familiar to me. Um... On this date in 1984, Samuel Shaw, happy birthday to him, was born. The current TNA superstar and former TNA gut check winner turns 31 today. <laughs> Don't really know. I haven't watched a lot. I of know time. you haven't watched a lot of Impact I probably Wrestling. should start watching it, considering it's actually on, on... I have Comcast, so I can watch oh, it. Oh, you can watch Destination America. Okay. So I can probably sacrifice a couple, like maybe an hour or two out of my Friday nights. Not watch the whole thing, but at least try and figure out when the Hardys are going to be on. <laughs> There you go. And finally, we're going to go way back on this one. 1942, Cassius Clay was born. The three-time heavyweight boxing champion who floated like a butterfly, stung, stung like a bee, bee. and was the guest can't see. And, was, and at WrestleMania 1 was a guest referee. Ah, see what I did there? Very, very good. Cassius. 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 I sorry, I was I, enunciating. Cassius oh, Clay. I'm sorry. Like Cashew, but Cassius Marcellus Clay. Yes, Cassius Marcellus Clay. There I we still go. have to. I actually really, a- aka Muhammad Ali. Ali yes, there was, there turned was actually, seventy-three today. That's actually, where I was going. He with looks all a little that. rough, poor guy. I really want to see the. Um, I'm right here. <laughs> oh no, you meant you meant <laughs> Ali. <laughs> I really. Good one. Ew, I like that. Ooh. I actually saw uh, the movie they made about him with Will Smith. I I still need to see that because it's. I think it's on on demand, and I've been meaning to watch it. Heard well, it was a great movie. See, at the end of the show, we get a cameo from Nick Cataldi. How about it's got to be better than the, than a movie back in the 70s called The Greatest, which was terrible. Yeah. So it wasn't The Greatest. It wasn't The Greatest movie. Yeah. I see my, my son said, did you see the movie with Will Smith? I said, no, I know the story. I mean, good <laughs> God. I, I, own, I own a movie called... Cassius Clay, or Muhammad Ali, a.k.a. Cassius Clay. It's a documentary. Well, I mean, I saw Titanic, and I knew how that story ended. 
They just did a little bit. You're missing country. my point. But that's okay. <laughs> Go on your head. <laughs> uh, no, but no, you can't no, get past all the hair. Are you kidding me? I, I read a couple of books on Muhammad Ali. Yeah. I, I I own Cassius Clay, you know, aka Cassius Clay. He's an Olympic I've gold seen medalist. The greatest. I read the book. I'm sorry. He was an Olympic gold medalist, I think. <laughs> I know, but what division? I, I light heavy. Light heavyweight. He wasn't a heavyweight. Well, I never said that. I no, just, no, well, just back I'm, then. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm just saying he was not a heavyweight then. Um, <laughs> he added some pounds when his ego inflated, you know. <laughs> ego? Oh. No, he had ego long before you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. One well, of the one best... he was never short on, that was no. ego. I feel like if he w he would have been one of the, he's one of the best might talk, he's one of the best talkers on the mic. Oh, God, yes. If he, if we would have. He, he, he got in the ring with Gorilla Monsoon for a few minutes once. Yeah. <laughs> Huge mistake. <laughs> uh, yeah, that didn't go over. Well. <laughs> for, for who, Gorilla or? Yeah, right. Um. Actually, it didn't take a genius to figure out it was all show. Oh, yeah. I mean, here, here's a guy <laughs> who's got the best hands in boxing, couldn't hit the gorilla monsoon, was like six foot four and 400 pounds, couldn't land one. You know, give me a break. Uh, oh, know. yeah, you knew something was being well, worse there. It was, it was before he, he fought Antonio Inoki, the Japanese oh, uh, champion. Oh, gosh, that, the, oh, that debacle. That was a disgrace. It really was. It really it was a horrible thing to watch. You know, <laughs> it was essentially like what was it, like a one-hour draw where they if basically that, didn't. Did it, did it even go that long? I think it was like six really rounds. Didn't really hit that much. Didn't they like didn't it. hit it all? Like well, it was just. It, the, the, the problem was Anoki was was kind of restricted. He had gloves on his hands, so he laid on his back and kicked Ali. And yeah, you know, he just he just you know. in a defensive position from his back the whole time. Well, understandably so. Yeah. I mean, under the circumstances, a, a real wrestler, I think, if <clears throat> if if you tie up a fighter, you grab him, you're, he's done. You know. Yeah. Unless the boxer gets a couple good ones in fast, you know. Or unless Vince McMahon's doing the booking. I wonder if he can <laughs> right, find any of his uh, Muhammad Ali's fights. We are we are way know. beyond. This is this is 1490 WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trent, and Nick Cataldi's coming up. He's got country music until 6 o'clock. Yay. Yay! We are WWE. Get ready, Trent. Trent. As WWE VIP Experience presents the WWE Live Super Show. Friday night, January 23rd at Sun National Bank Center. Who knows what will happen just two days before the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. You'll see John Cena. I will not quit. He'll engage in a brutal street fight with Mr. Money in the Bank, Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns challenges U.S. champion Rusev. Then, you'll see the lunatic cringe, Dean Ambrose, as he battles Bray Wyatt. I'm here. <gasps> Plus, the Divas and many more of your favorite superstars in action. Friday night, January 23rd at Sun National Bank Center. It's the best value in entertainment. Tickets start at just $15. Don't wait. Great seats are still available at the box office and ComcastTix.com.